good morning and welcome to worship this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, thank you, Patty. Boy, I'd rather have Jesus. Wonderful. And welcome to May. Hey, how about that? And uh, Cinco de Miles on Tuesday. Don't forget your free taco at Taco Bell. Uh, today is Shepherd Sunday in our church calendar, so you'll be hearing uh, some uh, scripture that uh, hopefully is familiar to you and will give you encouragement during this time of distance. Uh, Eastertide, the season that we've been going through, these 50 days of Easter between Christ's resurrection and the great Pentecost Sunday, uh, is a reminder that we are made new. New in the resurrection of Christ. And this is a perfect time to examine that newness in Christ and continue to grow in our faith. Because even when we get back together, things will have changed and there'll be a newness to it. We'll celebrate it. I want to add that I am continuously thankful for your generosity during this time of great need. I know you could be spending your time and money elsewhere, so your tithes and offerings that continue to come in do meet the needs of our church, and I'm continuously thankful that you spend time contacting each other and encouraging each other by phone and by mailing cards. Thank you so much for that good work that you are doing. And to you who have joined us today, we welcome you. To you who mourn and need comfort, to you who are weary and need rest, to you who are lonely and need a friend, to all who sin and need a Savior, this faith community opens wide its arms and in the name of Jesus Christ bids you welcome. Let's start off our worship service with our opening hymn, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. to the deep, deep pools of peace, to the green, lush lawns of grace. Day by day, Jesus calls us to pour out ourselves in service, to anoint the stranger with hope. Day by day, the Holy Spirit shows us the community we could be, the family we are called to become. Let us pray. Gentle yet powerful, lowly yet almighty, shepherd yet king, in your gentleness, guide us. In your power, strengthen us. In your lowliness, strip from us our selfish pride, which only destroys us. In your greatness, lift us up, that we might aspire to greater things. As a shepherd, call us to be your servants. As a king, call us to be your royal priesthood. O God, who is our shepherd and our king, O Christ, who was crucified and now risen from the dead, O Spirit, who comforts and empowers, O great one in three, Holy Trinity, this hour set us free to worship. Amen. Amen. Join me in our hymn, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
this time we're going to join together in our time of prayer. Uh, many of you have uh, joys and concerns that are upon your hearts this day. We will recognize them with a moment of silent prayer pri prior to the congregational prayer. But I do encourage you to remember to pray for a cure for COVID-19. Also pray for those who are ill, not just of coronavirus, but of all illnesses that still are taking lives this day. We lift up those who are recovering and those who are in need of medical care. Also, if we could remember our health care workers and first responders and those working in essential services that are so vital to our day-to-day -day existence. Remember our president and our elected officials, our bishop, Bishop Tremble, and Superintendent Russ Abel as they guide us in making decisions. Uh, we're real concerned about when can we meet together in in-person worship. So we're waiting on that news. So let's lift them up as they come to those critical decisions this, this week. Also, we continue to lift up those in the military branches and their families, many of whom are separated at this time. But also let us lift up this day those who are in need of a Savior and the hope that so many of us share that watch this. I uh, continue to place in our bulletin and on our Wednesday update uh, our prayer list. Uh, be sure to keep me up to date on any additions, but also any that need to be pulled out of there. So many of you have uh, been uh, in communication with me and uh, helped me through this, so I do appreciate that. But let us do come to our time of prayer. First, uh, remembering those uh, unspoken prayer requests that are upon our heart concerns that are vital to us. Let's remember those in our silent prayer, and then I'll lead us in our community prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our loving shepherd, you come to us with the strength and love of a father and the tender mercies, patience, and protection of a loving mother. We see you in the very living of our days, and yet we so often fail to praise you or to offer our burdens to you. Hear us, Lord. Hear us as we lift to you our prayers for others and for ourselves. We pray for those in need those who hunger or are homeless. We pray for those in pain, the abused, brokenhearted, and lonely. We pray for the sick in body and mind and for those who grieve. For the life of this community and all who put their trust in you for all their todays and all their tomorrows, we pray that your loving kindness to the world would be offered through our hands, our words, our deeds, our hearts. Free us, Lord as your own people, to sing your praise in the work of our everyday lives, in those comings and goings of our simple and complicated living, make us instruments of your peace and grace in weary days with weary people. And bless our memories, O God, that in our remembering we may partake of the mystery that is eternal life in its fullness. We pray in the very presence of the risen Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now join me, if you will, in a verse of Be Still My Soul.
Let us pray. Open our hearts, Lord, as we open your book today. Help these ancient words to be made new in our lives. May the Good Shepherd be real for us today. We trust you. Speak our names, and we will follow where you lead. Amen. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Our epistle reading this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. Peter writes, Slaves, accept the authority of your masters with all deference, not only those who are kind and gentle, but also those who are harsh. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what's the credit in that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to do this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on that cross, so that... Free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you, were going astray like sheep, but now, now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Our gospel reading this morning is from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. And this is Jesus speaking. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I have been led this week to discuss not only our reading from John's chapter 10, but also from the chapter prior. And I just want to take a moment today and discuss two issues that Jesus confronted then and which we deal with even today. Possibly in our very lives, spiritual blindness and spiritual deafness. 
First, let's talk about spiritual blindness. In the chapter before, chapter 9 of the Gospel according to St. John, it tells the story of a man born blind whom Jesus restores sight to. Then this man is judged unfit to worship with his community. And after being cast out, is found by Jesus. And he sees Jesus. And he believes and worships Jesus. Truly worships for the first time in his life. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, said, The consequence of Jesus' coming will be that by the just judgment of God, while the blind in body and soul receive their sight, they who boast they see will be given up to still greater blindness than before. Let me, uh, let me tell you a story. You know, I like to tell stories. My grandfather uh, owned a gas station in the 50s and 60s. One day, a man and his wife pulled into the gas station to refuel their car, and as the gas tank was being filled, uh, one of my grandfather's gas station attendants began to wash the windshield. And when he finished, the driver said, the windshield's still dirty, wash it again. Yes, sir, the attendant answered, and he scrubbed the windshield a second time, and he looked for any bugs or dirt that he might have missed that first time. And when he finished, the man in the car became angry. It's still dirty, he said, do it again. My grandfather's attendant cleaned the windshield a third time. By now, the driver was fuming, and he yelled, What's wrong with you, man? This windshield is still filthy. I'm going to talk to your boss to make sure you don't work here another day. And as the man was about to get out of his car, his wife reached over, removed his glasses, and wiped them with a tissue, then put them back on his face. The driver was terribly embarrassed when he realized the windshield was spotless. The problem wasn't the gas station attendant, but the driver's filthy glasses. Hmm. Uh, we all have blind areas in our lives that we're unable to see. Sometimes it can terribly damage our lives and the lives of others. And spiritual blindness is not a small matter. And so I ask, uh, you know, what makes us spiritually blind? Because actually our spiritual eyesight is supposed to progressively improve until we go to heaven. And I find that God often uses difficulties in our lives, times of trial, if you will, to enlighten our soul. And this improves our spiritual sight. But it's also possible that our spiritual sight becomes blurry due to these difficulties. We miss seeing the glimpses of God's grace. We miss seeing God in the situation. So we fail to see God's glorious hope for us in heaven. Our spiritual sight can also become blurry due to other spiritual reasons like the sin of pride and bitterness and anger and grudges and even bad theology and false assumptions and fixed ideas or any deceptiveness of sin. We have to examine ourselves. We have to ask ourselves, is my spiritual vision improving or deteriorating? If it's not improving, we must examine ourselves to see what is blocking us from having 2020 spiritual vision. We need to remove those hindrances that we find through sincere repentance and prayer because God's grace is needed to correct the issue. We alone, on our own, without grace, remain impaired. John Wesley wrote, It's a terrible melancholy truth that those whose eye is not single, which means focused, are totally ignorant of the nature of true religion and far remote from both holiness and happiness. 
yet no person is totally blind spiritually, some few rays of light have in all ages and nations gleamed through the shade, some streaks of light that prevented utter darkness. My friends, Jesus is still the true light that enlightens every person that comes into the world. The biblical revelation of Jesus is necessary, however, in order to truly deliver people from spiritual blindness. So I ask you today, what do you see day to day? Do you see the glorious kingdom of God coming soon? Are you truly hoping for God's kingdom to come? If our spiritual vision is blurry, my friends, it's hard to run the race to the end. It's hard to give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. And we can't, we can't run the good race to the end. Psalm 95 reminds us, For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In His hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are His also. The sea is His, for He made it, and the dry land which His hands have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the sheep of His hands. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Hear his voice. The second thing I want to talk about is spiritual deafness. Just briefly, chapter 10 in our gospel reading today begins with Jesus likening himself to a gate and a shepherd. Both, I find, are protectors of those who can't protect themselves. They can't protect themselves from those things which would take their lives. But this chapter, if I would have read on the whole chapter, it ends with discord as the religious Jews seek to stone Jesus. He's in Jerusalem and they seek to throw rocks at him until he's dead, not because he does good works, no, but because they say he blasphemes. They're not hearing what he's saying. Jesus tells us today and them at that time, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I'm the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So I ask you, who are you listening to today? Do you hear the glorious sounds of the kingdom of God coming soon? Are you truly hoping for God's kingdom to come? If our spiritual listening is hindered, it's hard to hear the good shepherd. It's hard to hear the good shepherd from those who would lead us astray. It's hard to give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. And once again, we can't run the good race to the end. But my friends, hear the good news. Jesus also said, I, come, I came into the world, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. And Jesus said, in the scripture day, I'm the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. He says, I came that they may have life, this new life, and have it more abundantly. My friends, Jesus calls us today to be a people who say, one thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. And Jesus calls us today to be a people who proclaim he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. We are called, my friends, to be a people who have life and have it abundantly. 
May the Lord restore our spiritual vision, our spiritual hearing, and the joy of his salvation in this, in, in us, day by day. It may take time to get 2020, but we can work through it so that we can run this good race, see it to the finish, and receive our heavenly reward. May we actually live to be those streaks of light that Wesley spoke of, even in a dark time, to be the voice of hope to those who haven't heard it, who are desperate for hope. And may we, like sheep, see our shepherd and hear his calling us to him. Amen. Now we're going to join together in the hymn, Jesus Paid It All. peace who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen.